What are Paul's final instructions to the Romans? We're going to find that out in Romans 16. Well, here we are at the end of Romans. Look at that. We have finished six books in the Bible, and that means we only have 60 more to go. But we're making good headway in the New Testament. We're going to get some more letters from Paul, from Peter, from other people. These letters are just so valuable to hear in people who, in some cases, knew Jesus and some people experienced Jesus through the road to Damascus, their view, their messages that they've been getting from Jesus. So in the end, he says that he wants to commend Phoebe, a servant. And this word servant is the same word that we get deacon from. So she's a deacon as well. And she's in a church. And so you should welcome her. She's the one who brought this letter out to them and give her, he says, whatever she needs because she's been a patron to many as well as myself. See, that's what makes this uh, logo software so good. I can click on Phoebe's name and see if she was referenced anywhere else. But she's the one who delivered this letter. But also greet Priscilla and Aquila, his fellow workers in Jesus. But they risk their lives for him and for the churches of the Gentiles. He's greeting all the churches in their houses. Remember, these are going to be a time of house churches. There's no Roman acceptance of Christianity. So there's no buildings. There are no official gatherings. This doesn't come for a while. So these are going to be all house churches, which means that they're small groups here and there. Hopefully they talked together, but maybe that also led to some of the splintering. The Jewish houses had the Jewish Christians in the Gentile houses had the Gentile, and you could see where people would get very split up. In watching some of the commentaries, it asked the question, why in the end did Paul write the book of Romans? And so an interesting point was, we talked about how it was trying to bring people together. What happened was, if you look at the history, is the Jews were expelled from Rome, and they had to leave for an awfully long time. So meanwhile, the Gentile church is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They're, they're having their home churches. They probably all have jobs, occupations, they're part of society. And now the Jews come back after the exile is over with, and maybe they have nothing. Maybe they don't even have homes, and maybe they weren't welcomed as much as they should have been. Not only that, they were each looking down on each other. You can see that kind of division being natural. We've been here. We've been living here. We're doing pretty well, but who are you? Or, hey, we're coming back, we need help, but we're, we're the original people. We're the, we're the original people of God. You're, you're just add-ons. You know, you can see just kind of human nature getting in there and starting these fights. He greets other person who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Again, that's going to be Asia Minor. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. I think there's Seven Marys listed in the New Testament. We're not sure which one this is. There's some other names, his fellow prisoners. He says kinsmen, meaning they're Jewish, but also prisoners. Some other workers with him. He's he's giving thanks and praise for all of these people. He's met so many people and he knows them all. This is not just a fly-by-night minister who goes around And just, uh, you know, meets a thousand people like these street preachers we had on my campus. But this is not the case for Paul. Paul knew people. And he told them all to greet each other with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. We do not greet each other with a holy kiss. I mean, maybe we should, but I'm glad we don't. But maybe that's a wrongness on my part. And so he says he has one last thing to say to them. He wants them to avoid division. We talked about that. They split Jew and Gentile. It's an obstacle, he said. It's, it's, it's contrary to what Christ has taught you and that we should avoid them. And if you're doing splits, if you're breaking off things with people, you're not serving God. You're serving yourself. You're just into, into this because of people praising you. Yeah, it's good you got rid of those other people. We don't like those other people. You know, you're just doing it to be praised by it. I'm sure he heard a lot of that being with the Pharisees. Oh, we have to cut them out. I think about Nicodemus or someone, you know, because they have listened to Jesus and they didn't say mean things about him. Splitting is the human heart. 
And he says that people know all about their obedience. They're an obedient church. He rejoices over them, but he also wants them to watch out for this evil of splitting. God is a God of peace. He wants us to be together. He says in the end, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's a very popular church service ending. He mentions Timothy, who is going to travel with him. We've heard the name Timothy, and he writes letters to Timothy. He also talks about a city treasurer, a brother, Cortus. Now, this is interesting because we've seen uh, Primus, Secundus. um, I don't know what the the third one is, but now Cortus. That means he's going to be the fourth. You know, think about a, a person so unimportant, they don't even get a name. You're just one, two, three, and four. This guy was four. And, you know, like seven of nine on, on the board. You're not even important enough to have a name. And so this guy is four. And then at the very end, and this doxology, I guess, is not in every piece of the older pieces of scripture. But whether it's there or not, it doesn't change anything. But it's a very nice thing. And some people even indicate that this very final ending was written in Paul's own hand. Oftentimes, he he had people writing for him. People suspected he had poor vision, that he couldn't see very well. And so he had narrated most of these letters through other writers. In the movie I saw, that was probably either right or wrong. That person was Luke, but there was probably many other writers. In fact, a lot of commentaries I listened to say that that other writing is Cordus the slave. So here we had a slave educated enough to write these things down for Paul. So he says, now to him who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for all these ages. He says, now you know it. Now it's been disclosed to you through prophetic writing. It's now known to all these nations, according with the command of the eternal God, to bring obedience of faith to the only wise God. Be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. But the fact that some people felt, like I said, that it wasn't in some of the earlier pieces or that it was also tradition that it was written in his own handwriting, he is trying to hand this on to you. He's trying to say, now, this faith, these secrets that are there, It's all according to all the ages disclosed through the prophetic writing, the prophecies, through the Torah, made known to all the nations. It's coming out to the world. And he says again, now it's time to be obedient. This letter must have been something else. Like I said, you know, there's always those time travel movies like this. Oh, if you could travel back in time, where would you go? Well, I have a lot of places that I'd love to go. Wouldn't you love to see? the people opening up this letter and reading it to the churches that are there. It's just stunning. And that ends chapter 16 and the letter to the Romans from Paul. We're going to start up next time in 1 Corinthians. So what I'm going to meditate on is this fact that we have to look for divisions and obstacles. And like I said, I belong to a church that I like very much. But I I will tell you that at times we have looked for divisions and obstacles, and I'm going to contemplate that a bit. When is it important we do these kinds of things, and when is it important that we make peace? That's where I'm really looking at for this. I'm I'm curious about it, and I want to do more research into it. What I'm going to pray about is we heal these divisions. We pave over all these cracks that we come together as a church, and Look out for people who are trying to split us up. And what I'm going to share with others is that fact that we're meant not to cause divisions, not to create obstacles, because it's contrary to the doctrine we've been taught. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate it. I hope you have a really great day. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Keep me in your prayers, and I'll keep praying for you as well.